What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer, coming to all of you on this podcast. And we have a question today for all of us as men to ponder, to consider, to think over, to mull over, to be with. And I think that most men actually have this question in their background. And it's something that we want to be able to bring into the uh, foreground. What is that question? The question is, if I were to pass away, if I were to die, my life was over as of tomorrow, would I be happy with the life that I lived? And let me just preface by saying what I'm about to share with you is in no way, shape, or form a means of making anyone feel badly. I respect the life that each person lives. I respect your choices, and only you can decide for yourself the bigness of who you are and the life that you came here to live, and only you can really be honest with yourself to know if you are selling yourself and others short of what you were capable of or your true potential. And when I'm honest with myself and with the close to 10,000 men that I've had the privilege, the sacred privilege and honor to work with over the past 10 years, really since 1995, but more, more uh, intimately in the past 10 years through Man on Fire, one of the pains that a man carries is he's terrified to leave this world, to leave this earth with regret. Because deep down, we all know that we have more to give. Deep down, we all know that there's a potential that we most likely haven't accessed, summoned, tapped into, claimed, owned, earned, and lived. And I believe that men have a terror of taking their last breath one day and it being a breath of regret a breath of knowing that the life that I ended up living is not consistent with the life that I had painted, the life that I had envisioned, the life that I knew that was possible, the potential that was in front of me, squandering it, squashing it, holding it down, pushing it down, stuffing it down, where we get away from our true greatness. Because each man knows on some level you're born for more than this. And I will always be a reminder to all of the brothers that you are a phenomenal man, you're an extraordinary man, and you're capable, most likely, of far more than you're giving yourself credit for. Many of us think we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not intelligent enough, we're not powerful enough. No, that's for the other guy, that's not for me. And we can get into the habit of lying to ourselves and diminishing our greatness, diminishing our light, rather than owning our light, owning who we truly are, and having the courage to live into that version of who we are for ourselves, for our family, and for humanity. So this pain that we carry as men, and this thing that we should ponder, is if my life were to end tomorrow, am I okay with that? I remember when I went to uh, chiropractic school, uh, 1990 to 94, big shout out to anyone who went to Life College, Life University down in Marietta, Georgia. And one of the slogans of the school was to give, to love, to serve, to do lasting purpose. And I, I carried that with me from school where I know that it's all about giving, loving, serving, and doing all that I can to bring the fullness of who I am to the world, to give all of my gifts to the world, to be of service to humanity and leaving nothing on the field, the blood, the sweat, the tears, leaving nothing, nothing. There was nothing else I could have given. To know that you gave your all is all that you ever have to contemplate. Did I give my all? Did I give my best? Did I have the courage to live into my full potential? So for those of you who have been following me for a while, You've likely heard me share my story that I had the 
very beautiful uh, privilege, sacred privilege of uh, holding my father's hand for his very last breath here on earth. And there, there was a, obviously there was, you know, a sadness and tears. And I remember telling him, you, you can go, dad, you can go. I got it from here. You, you have been nothing but an amazing dad. I couldn't have asked for a better dad. I'll look after your younger one, who's my younger brother, and it's okay, you can go now. And I, I wanted him to, to leave with that blessing. But I, I also know that he had a look of distress. He had a look of sadness. He had a look of regret. He wasn't going out on his terms. He wasn't going out the way that he wanted to go out. He knows that he had more inside of him. And, and I, want, I'm, I want to be really clear on this. For where I'm personally at in my own life as a man, there's not one part of me that judges him. You know, we go through a certain evolutionary development in our life as men, where at one point we may blame our parents. Why couldn't my dad have been more like this or my mom have been more like this? And they screwed me up and you, you build re resentment and judgments and naming and blaming and shaming towards them. And then if you're lucky enough and you start to do some uh, personal work, you know, some personal healing, you end up replacing all of that with a deep level of empathy and love and compassion and just so much heartfelt um, true, true, authentic love for your parents of recognizing they truly did their best. They absolutely did the best based on the uniqueness of their upbringing and who their parents were and what they were exposed to and the life that they lived. And, you know, in the man on fire world, we just simply don't judge other men. We don't judge another brother until you've walked a day in his shoes. You know, don't judge another person. More often than not, judgments are just reflections of parts of you that you haven't come into full acceptance of. So getting back to my dad, I know that for him, he didn't go out on his terms. From my lens, I was proud of the dad that he was. I was proud of everything that he, that he accomplished. And I, I loved him for all that he was and all that he wasn't, all that he did and all that he didn't do. But the one life lesson that he left me with, the last one that he wanted to teach me while he was still alive, was don't go out this way. Don't go out with regret. Don't go out in a way that you wouldn't have designed it. Right? He ended up in a nursing home with, with dementia. And, and I remember you know, he had shared with me that he would never let that happen. I, I will never, ever, ever let myself end up in a nursing home. And I, I remember I had told him that what if, what if you end up that in a nursing home one day and you don't know that you're there? Because what he had shared with me was I'll never let myself end up in a nursing home. I would sooner dive out of my window of my 23rd floor apartment in Manhattan. He meant it, that he would have dove out the window before he'd let himself go there. And I said, Dad, what if, what if you end up in a nursing home and you don't know that you're in a nursing home? And sadly, that's how it played out. So I, I know that it, it didn't go down the way he wanted it to go down. And, and there was a lot of regret, a lot of anger, and a lot of frustration. And so there's this life that we're living as men. And then there's this life that we're capable of. And there's a gap between the two. The life I, I know is possible, the life that I thought I'd be living, the happiness and the joy and the fulfillment with the relationship, the children, the career, the mission and the purpose, the finances, the health. There, there's that life that I always thought I was going to live into. And then there's this life that I'm living into now where maybe one or two or three areas of your life you're not happy with. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe you crush it in business and you have no problem making money and you're the CEO or the owner and money is not a problem for you. But the same level of success perhaps didn't translate or carry over into your marriage, which is a totally different game. One of the hardest games to, to learn how to play in this world, to be in an intimate relationship and to, you know, expose yourself in this way and learn how to have a successful relationship. Or maybe, you know, some of you are, you're really great at what you do and you, you make a healthy living, you do really well, and it's provide a beautiful and extraordinary life for your family, but deep down you know that it's not your greatest passion, your greatest desire. It's not fulfilling you. You know that there's a deeper purpose, there's a deeper mission, there's a deeper level of leadership for you to, that for you to access. So you know that this is not the legacy that you want to leave behind. So we all have, you know, a couple of domains in our life, whether it's our, our health, our wealth, our marriage, or being off purpose with our, our very mission of why, why are we here as men? There's usually some sort of a gap of here, here's where I'm living, and there's where I thought I would be, and there's that rickety bridge, right? 
like you've watched in all the movies, maybe Indiana Jones, one of those movies. And there's a terror to cross that bridge. We're scared. We're scared of, well, what if it breaks? What, what if the, the wood shatters and I fall? And so this terror of failing, this terror of not being able to walk the bridge makes us turn around and go back the other way and, and settle for a life of mediocrity, uh, a life of blandness, fair, good, average, okay. And tick tock, the clock just keeps going by. Tick tock, tick tock, lost time is never found. And next thing you know, you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So where, where the hell did all these years go? And there's this pain, this regret, this anger, this frustration of this is not the life that I thought I'd be living. Some of you that are listening could recognize that that's true for you. Others, if you are living into your life that was painted by your soul, if you're living into the fullness of your destiny, kudos to you and great job for having the courage to go there. So the question was, you know, if your life was to end tomorrow, would you have regret? And if the answer is yes, what are you waiting for? What is it going to take for you to wake up? What is it going to take for you to make an empowered decision, a decision from a place of inspiration, for you to take actions that you've been unwilling to take? What is it going to take for you to get back in touch with a family member that you've severed the cord with or have a horrible relationship with? What is it going to take for you to reignite your marriage? What is it going to take for you to start talking to your father again or your brother again or your mother again or a family member again? What is it going to take for you to reclaim your health, your vitality? What will it take for you to stop settling for a life of mediocrity and finally go after your dreams? Like Muhammad Ali said, if your dreams don't scare the shit out of you, then they're not big enough. What will it take? Because if you answered yes, that if your life were to end tomorrow, there's regret there, the question you should ask yourself is, what, what am I waiting for? What is it going to take? Right? You saw in one of the Rocky movies, Apollo's inspiring Rocky to get motivated, come on, work out. He's like, tomorrow, tomorrow. And the famous line from Apollo, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. What is it going to take? In the man on fire world, the time is always now. I went to Fiji a lot of times and uh, they say it's either daytime or nighttime. Right? They have a totally different concept of time. Man on fire world, our concept of time is now. When, when should you do it? Now. Not tomorrow, right? I have a younger brother who wants to lose weight. When are you going to the gym? Tomorrow. I said, bullshit. Go now. Hang up with me. Better yet, stay on the phone with me. Take a picture when you're down on the treadmill. Now, time's always now. So life is precious. Life is short. We're all born as an acorn with the potential and the opportunity to blossom and grow into a mighty oak tree with our branches reaching out wide and far to impact others, to bring the bigness of who we are, to shine our light so powerfully that others can find their light. So you can be an inspiration to others, motivation to others, empower others, help others awaken. We came here to love. We came here to do, to give, to love, to serve with every ounce of our being. And the harsh reality of working with over 10,000 men and looking at my own life is we all share the same pain. If we are living a life that is beneath what we are capable of, if we're living a life below the potential of who we are as men, if we are living a life below the standard of who we were made to be, the harsh reality is it's supposed to hurt. I don't say that to shame any man or to put guilt on your shoulders. You do a good enough job of that already, wearing shame and guilt for the stuff you're not proud of. And, and that's part of your healing process to learn how to shed shame, how to shed guilt, how to feel it, cry with it, laugh with it, scream with it, and shed it, not hide from it not hide because you have shame and guilt. No, it, it should be an inspiration to wake up and say no more. So I'm not here to put any man down. I'm here to lift you up, to remind you that you are built for more. You are better than how you're most likely showing up. And for those of you that are already showing up and playing full out, good for you. Because I know how much courage that takes. I lived 40 plus years of my life settling for a life of neutrality and mediocrity. I know what it takes to get to the next gear. 
it's possible. You're not different. You're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. You're not stupid. You're not dumb. It's not that you're not smart enough. Most likely for a lot of you, you've been brainwashed by your own mind, by the pirates inside of your own head. You've been most likely hanging out in peer groups that are not lifting you up, reminding you of how amazing, how phenomenal, how extraordinary you are. You forgot. And anytime you're ever swimming in the man on fire world, the man on fire universe, I, as well as the coaches, will always remind you, you got more, you're better than this. Show me who you really are. Show your family who you really are. Show the mirror who you really are, the one thing that will never lie to you. Show the world who you are. Because each and every one of you came here to leave a legacy, not to bow out with regret, not to go down without a fight. No, you came here to love deeply. You came here to give, to serve with every ounce of your being. Anything that's less than that is not who you are. And I'm not here to diminish what you might've gone through in your life. You know, we've had so many men come through our program and after working with 10,000, I know the stories. I know how there's physical abuse that a man grows up with, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, spiritual abuse. Some of you have had horrendous and horrific stuff happen to you. And you can still rise. You can still get up, wake up, and go forward. You can still claim who you truly are and not let the past beat you down, but let it lift you up. Let it inspire you. Let it be energy inside of every one of those hurts and wounds and traumas that is your fuel to claim who you are in this world. Not so you could prove that you're enough. You got to remember that you already are enough. Now have the courage to live into that version of you. And you giving the fullness of who you are to yourself, to your family, to your friends, to strangers, to the world, to humanity. What a gift. What a gift so that one day when you do take your last breath, it's one of freedom, it's one of triumph, it's one of victory, it's one of celebration, it's one of fulfillment. And it's one with a smile on your face because that's what every man wants. That last breath to have a giant smile on his face. I did it. I gave with every ounce of my being. I gave, I loved, and I served. Gentlemen, here is to you, rising with passion, with power, and with purpose. It is your man on fire mentor, Dave Mailer. I love each and every one of you, and I truly believe in all of you. Bye for now, guys.